be the one who's going to argue for a particular type of justice. The Republic dialogue is about justice. What is justice? Right? And so there's going to be lots of parts to this. But in the beginning, they're all arguing over what justice should be. And Glaucon is going to argue that it's the interest of the stronger. When I was a kid and had philosophy, we used to have chants. So like, bomb fog. Bomb fog, brotherhood of man, fatherhood of God. No. I.S., interest of the stronger. So we have the first explanation for what justice is in a very pessimistic sense, that it's always the stronger doing what they want. I mean, that's Athens. Um, it's, it's, it's Conan the Barbarian, the musical. Right? I mean, if you think about it, this is, this is kill whoever you want. Take whatever you want. You know, if you're strong enough, boom. You know, you're the one that wins. You get your way. So interest of the stronger. It's a little bit more complex because it's not just the stronger getting whatever they want. It's the stronger imposing their moral point of view on everyone else. So if you think about it when World War II is over and we put the Nazis on trial and we punish them for doing what they believed to be the right thing, following orders, right? Well, it turns out following the orders that your officers gave you were illegal orders. You should not have killed civilians or the Holocaust and things of that sort. Um, well, in defense, you know, if I didn't do that, they would have killed me. You should have died instead of done what was immoral. You know? And, and so how does that come about? Well, we impose a moral perspective on those in the trial and said, you know, now we have the Geneva uh, Conference that says you're not allowed, in, even in a war, to kill civilians and stuff. So, so for example, Putin is, you know, if he ever comes out of Russia, he's under arrest because he's been already found guilty of breaking uh, of these kinds of laws, right? Um, so interest of the stronger is kind of like that, you know, where the, the stronger, the one who wins, imposes its sense of justice on the other. Uh, at least that seems to be, uh, to be part of it. But it goes on from that because you end up with the ring of Gyges as a story. So they come up with a story and how many folks have heard of these powerful rings? Especially if you put them on, they make you invisible. Word of the ring? Yep. Heard of that kind of thing? Um, so, I mean, that's an old, old, old myth mythological story, right? You know, that what if you get this ring and it turns you in, invisible, you can basically do whatever you want. You kill the people that you want, they don't know you're there. That's almost as good as an invisibility club. Oops, sorry. I shouldn't keep bringing up Harry Potter, right? What, my one daughter bought me one of those little insignias on a necklace, you know, the, the triangle with the circle and the... And the But so, so what happens here is the individual becomes so powerful he could do whatever he wants. The trouble is the whole community falls apart. So this is proof that that form of justice is not just. Whether you like the story or not, or the argument or not, et cetera. So is that? It's like a poetic form of might does not make right. Might does not make right. Because you end up with the whole society collapse. What we're looking for is justice in the big picture. And having an individual get his way all the time is not going to do it. Right? Um, 
So they move on. What's the next definition of justice? Well, the next one is TTPD. Tell the truth and pay your debts. Tell the truth and pay your debts. Oh, that sounds like a good definition of justice, Socrates. Well, let's look at it. You know, what about when you go to a bar with a friend and the friend says, here's my truck keys. Has to be a truck. Here's my truck keys. And if I get drunk, don't give them back to me. Right? You can drive me home or something. Right? No. Um, well, of course, you know what happens. This guy is now drunk. And he comes back to you and says, give me my tree, my keys. And you being the good friend, oh, I, I sent them in the mail to your wife. Or some such excuse. He's drunk. It works, right? You know? You know? But what have you just done? You've lied to your friend. And how many of you have heard the expression of white lie? No. You know? Little lies, sweet little lies. Sorry, I better not sing. You know? Right? Some lies actually are better for you to say than the truth in certain contexts. Right? Because you don't want your friend driving home drunk. You're saving his life and the lives of perhaps other people, right? On the road, etc. So it turns out that tell the truth and pay your debts isn't true all the time. There are other ways uh, that you could view it. So they move on, and the next one is gay ho. Sorry, G E H O. I still remember it. I still remember. Dr. Claiborne, gay ho, you know, <laughs> all class full of people all chanting gay ho to help remember. We had a whole list of these, right? Um, give to each his own. And notice that turns out to be the math for these folks get this, these folks get this, these folks get this, right? Give to each his own. Each person is a certain type of person. And if you can figure out a, a, a society that will enable those individuals to get the best out of life that they like, right? I mean, if you've got someone that really likes physical things and you send them to a monastery, they're going to be so upset with you because that's not what they think the best life is. is you know, walking around, reading texts, praying, you know, working in the garden for some sunlight, you know, that kind of, that's not going to be a, a, a thrilling life for that person, right? Um, so that's not a just situation. But for the per people that want to do that, that's, I, I watched a movie this um, weekend that I kept thinking, you know, there's got to be a reason for it. I was called Therese, and it was uh, about a a young girl, she was 15, she wanted to go into the convent that her sisters had gone to, two of her sisters had gone to. She wanted to go there too, and she gets into the convent, and she's there about 11 years, and she dies of TB. And the movie's over. And I, the, I'm watching the whole movie, and I'm thinking, when is something going to happen? <laughs> and it never does. And it turns out that Therese is actually, uh, you know, they built the cathedral there for Therese. And, and the, the Carmelites, uh, Mount Carmel, um, St. Therese. Watch the whole movie thinking something interesting was bound to happen and it never did. So this person was so boring. She really just wanted to pray and do the rosary and kneel in front of her picture. And like, why did this person become a saint? But there it is. And uh, boy, you know, that's what she wanted in life. You know, to do that. What, you put very many people in that spot and they'd hate you for forever. That's torture. 
called prison, actually, you know, from a different perspective. Right? Um, cute movie, though, but I mean, still. Um, so, I also need to give you the uh, quiz question for today. I think I know what it is. Why is it taking so forever? Okay, I'm going to I'm going to wing it and guess what it is. So this comes from the Euthyphro. Remember we talked about that last class. Um, and in in that um, Socrates' argument with Euthyphro uh, is. Is the pious pious because the gods love it? Or do the gods love the pious because it's so pious? So this question updates it somewhat and puts you on the spot. So Jesus comes to your door. Hypothetically, right? And knocks on the door and you answer and it's Jesus. And you recognize that it's Jesus. I tried that and it didn't work. Well, what Jesus says to you is sell everything you have, give the money to the poor, and then come follow me. And my question to you is do you go with it? Or do you argue with it? Questions for him? Like, if I go with you, is it fish and chips all the way? Are we assuming we 100% know it's Jesus? You know, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> part of the hypo hypothesis. You know, it's not, it's not like the guy in Pennsylvania that just got out of prison. I was just checking. You know, no, this is, if this is, you know it's Jesus, okay. and to make it even more significant, you know he is God. So this is God himself coming to your door and saying, sell what you have, give the money to the poor, and come follow me. Do you go with him? Or, or do you argue with him? I mean, I, I would argue that being an American, your, your task is first to argue with him. I don't see where I have the. Oh, here's. Yeah, this is it. So, so there's the question. So he is God. You know he is God. He says to sell all you have, give the money to the poor, and come follow him. Do you go with him? Or do you ask questions and even argue with him? And I capitalized it, right? Just to see. Now, I mean, if you think about it, that's what a monastery does. I mean, Therese did that. So, and, and, and of course... That's why she became a saint, I suppose. But what if you've got a child? You know, and you have the stroller and the changing bag and the formula and the. Did you need to bring a kid with? Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, when Jesus tells people this, he must be thinking about just men. What, I, I mean, yeah, all the apostles were men. What do you like? What do you think you like? I like my little thing. I don't know if I sell it. That just means you're a good American. And I mean, we grow up liking stuff. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I'm not a true American. I, I, I did notice I did not go to the monastery. 
I joined the army. Yeah, I wouldn't have gone to the monastery. You're going for that middle class, not the philosopher class um, first. Well, at, at my time of that age, um, the priesthood was no. becoming less and less attractive to a lot of Roman Catholics. I mean, there were still some of us that, that were drawn to it, but, and I, I seriously thought about it, because, wow, the, the priests were really the males that we could see. I mean, you know, my father was at work all day. I never saw him until, like, he came home at night and had a beer, you know? Uh, but the priest, you know, was like, wow, you know, Darth Vader, you know? Everybody, chief Darth Vader, you know? Well, we better go because people are waiting to come in.